怪獣怪獣珍珠,珍珠財宝,財宝ヒーホー、another、uh, parallel with Avatar actually. The intro and everything changed when Gon's father went out for milk and never came back. Hunter x Hunter episode 4. This ridiculous exam. I guess begins with round one of heavy sprinting or long distance running. Hope x and x ambition. That's no joke. Looks like he's just chilling. So casual. Oh,、uh, yeah, I mean, that's a long way to run. I severely underestimated Timothy. This bro's like, abilities and mine do not match his appearance at all. Monster's ball. That is not fair. That is not fair. He's on a skateboard. I mean, why wouldn't he use it? You know? Look, if we can turn our opponents into flowers, surely a skateboard is allowed. You gotta use tools at your disposal. Going on 49. Damn, that was rad. <laughs> I'm also impressed. Best friends. That's just how you become friends as a kid. t e l l i n g you're just next to each other and you're friends. Come on, Timothy, don't let me down. After 30 kilometers, that's early. That's a total meltdown. Pull yourself together, man. Don't let him see you bleed like that. Kinda wish Timothy joined the gang, but oh well. This guy is just spending money on this exam. He is just opening his whole wallet for this sabotage. He might need a budget $300 on trash talking, $500 on juice and laxatives. No cost too great for my fragile ego. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He just likes this, this element of it. He doesn't even want to pass. He may not really fully be aware of that. So elegant. We're approaching like an elite level of running. We're like, we've blown past an elite level of running. What's the longest marathon? I don't run, so I don't know. This is just a whole can of worms. I don't know the answer. Are our marathon's like 5k? <laughs> Full marathon, 26.2 miles. It's about 42 kilometers. Yeah, they've they blown past that. Apparently, some dude ran 350 miles without stopping in about 81 hours, which is sort of unfathomable to me. This is even harder because they, like, they pointed out last episode, they don't know how far they have to run. Could be 7,000, who knows? Pull together, Leo Leo. He's doing this in a suit, too. That's real respect. I mean, everyone's just wearing, wearing way too much clothing for this. Gon's gonna help him somehow, probably. Honestly, I'm surprised no one has stolen Lua's skateboard because apparently anything goes. Nah. Gon accepts every challenge that he comes across. Yeah, I mean, have a little rest. There you go. Breathe for 20 seconds. He left behind his briefcase full of drugs. That's how much it means to him. Oh, Gon、oh, took it. Picked up extra baggage. Yeah, <laughs> they just became best friends so effortlessly. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, right. After an 80 kilometer refreshing tunnel sprint, it's time for a refreshing Stairmaster 5000. Ambition. He can't use his skateboard anymore. Let the man focus. He's in a, in a place right now. There's more to it, is my guess. Even if it is money, why money? What's the money for? Relating to him, opening up. He, sorry. Damn, they harvest them for their eyes? It's actually a nice gesture from him. I mean, it's an odd moment, odd conversation, but I kind of love it because he made himself vulnerable, and in that vulnerability, it's, it's both a sign of respect and an invitation to connect. I mean, a possible great cost to Kurapika. It's unsolicited information that in other situations could go wrong, but I think it's actually saying something about how he feels about Leo Leo. You can see Leo Leo is someone who will understand, appreciate it, and probably has his own motivations, which I suspect as well. <laughs> 
俺にはお前みたいな立派な動機はねえよ。俺の目的はやっぱり金さ。He just rejected Kuropika's kind offer. 夢も心も人の命だって金次第だ。There's something beyond that. The question is not, is he after money, but why he's after money in that case. There it is. He was a kid. He's been holding on to this for a very long time. I don't blame him. Perfectly, perfectly legitimate. What? <laughs> the money thing is a tough one. I actually relate a lot to what he was saying about being a kid and being naive because I think when I was young, I kind of bought the message that's passed down that money is intrinsically evil or that it contains an evil and that it's something that should not be desired and not be worked for, that it's shallow, vain, superficial. Over time, my view has obviously become a lot more nuanced. I think like most goals, it depends totally on like why, what's the underlying purpose? And also, is it accurate that that thing is going to get you to that underlying purpose? You know, there's a lot of false friends. There are things that money won't get you. And it's very important to understand that like money will not bring you any kind of like personal emotion. Emotional salvation. It's probably similar to power in the sense that power is not what corrupts necessarily. It just gives you fewer restraints, but sometimes those restraints are keeping in your worst elements. And if you haven't handled those worst elements yet, if you haven't locked them down, they come out in full force. If you have power or money or freedom, even, and you have impulses that have previously been kept in check by the fact that you could not follow them, once you can follow them, you will follow them all the way down into a hole. A relevant question to that pursuit also is what are you sacrificing to get? There. There's a chance that you sacrifice things that actually are valuable that give you a better chance of getting to what you truly want or what actually is good for you in the pursuit of something that tragically won't get you what you really want anyway. I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories of people reaching just tr amazing heights of money, power, fame. They were telling themselves they were doing it for people, you know, for family, yet in the process, sacrificed the relationship with their family. So it ended up being totally counterproductive. There's a way to make any element of life, whether that be material or spiritual, like even one's own darkness, work as a tool for one's betterment. But it kind of depends on who's in control. I'll give an example that's very personal to me. I've always, 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 I've wanted a life where I'm, I have relative levels of freedom. And I mean that in terms of my time and in terms of my location. Well, I have that, right? And overall, it's a, it's a really wonderful thing. And like every day, I'm grateful. For real. But it also revealed challenges that I didn't anticipate. Like, I hadn't quite learned how to manage my time. My time was managed by necessity by having jobs and having to show up at a certain time or lose the job, right? There's that incentive, that axe hanging over my head. Without that axe, it becomes me versus me in the struggle for like getting things done, not going totally off the deep end in terms of socializing, partying. Vices, I've had to learn over time the importance of that and how to deal with it because I had never developed those skills before. I notice this a lot in discussions I have with people. And part of the reason why I recognize it is because I know it in myself. When we're very heavily occupied by things in life, that becomes a reason not to do the things we know we should be doing or the things we want to do. And the story is something like, well, I need to get out of this situation first in order to actually get to those things. But the reality is everybody has time and everyone is making choices. If one has not learned how to like deliberately chart that time, freedom actually might be a bad thing. Because what is going to happen is the same thing you're doing in the limited time you have is what you're going to do in all the extra time you have. It's not going to be any different unless you sort of learn to turn it around. Time is kind of an, uh, an illusory thing in that sense. For Leo Leo, the money pursuit feels pure, but I think what it suggests is that what he really wants to do is help people and not taking anything away from the money pursuit, like by all means to get rich and help people. But at least that opens the discussion to other avenues that might be more in line with who he naturally is and what's in front of him. Or like, you know, just get money. I mean, do the hunter exam and get money. Use that. He looked like Goku in that shot. Looks like it. Wait till the section of the exam that's reaching for something on a high shelf. Oh, he's a fishing rod. Damn, this dude's in it for the challenge. That's badass. He's gonna come back any day now. He's <laughs> dead. I think luckily for him, Mito-san has a heart of gold. Oh, wait a minute, I'm confused about the timeline. So he just came back to the island to have a kid, or did he have a kid when he was 12? How do you feel about that, Kalua? 
little indifferent. Well, I'm waiting for somebody to hear Gon's story and like just give him a big hug. Bye! Who won? <laughs> it's like going by a nose. <laughs> so elegant. <laughs> Aww, sweet as always. <laughs> One more, one more, get it, one more step. The kids are going into the forest. Can they be more deceptive than the pre-exam exam? Don't trust the animals. I think that's a given, but okay. That sucks at the last step. Imagine running 90 kilometers and then you can't Indiana Jones the, the falling hatch. Hunter X Hunter Universe is just out to fool you. What, is he the animal? Trust no one, for real. I don't know if that's supposed to be convincing. But then, wh like, what? Huh? Then, well, wait. Are we even in the exam still? Where are the actual examiners? Nah, I think he's real. He's legit. Okay. This guy's just allowed to kill at will. That makes the most sense. The most sus suspicious thing about this guy, though, is that he has no mouth, yet he's talking. <laughs> no, oh my god, oh my god! Yes. Not really. <laughs> no, Leo, Leo, no. Why? So what I'm hearing is this is another running exam. <laughs> no, it's just, the whole thing is just running. Every phase just turns out to be running. The reward for passing this 90 kilometer sprint is a 90 kilometer sprint. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I love Leo Leo's commitment to his tie. And honestly, it's astonishing that only that many dropped out. Wow. Oh, that seems pretty chill. I was just running. <laughs> you can just. This is a lot of running. I've been thinking this ending sounds familiar. It just occurred to me. Are they the same people who did uh, Parasite? Sounds like the Parasite opening ending. Can't remember. Yes, it is them. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Good. That's been nagging at me since episode one. One thing I got to give the show a lot of credit for already in just four episodes is it's such a breeze to watch. Like if I didn't have to do editing, I would just be binging this whole this whole arc. There are like just no dull moments. I think my favorite parts of this episode are the discussion between Kuro, Kuro Pika and Leo Leo. The just casual, no effort friendship between Gon and Kilua, And that unexpectedly brutal shot of the vultures just ravaging that guy's carcass. Least favorite part, Timothy dropping out. R.I.P. Timothy.